Hi guys, how's it going? So today we're talking about how virtual reality is playing part in the US elections and also helping to educate others about politics. Hello, bonjour, comment ça va and welcome to you. If it's your first time here to the channel, really nice to meet you and welcome back to all our regular subscribers. It's always awesome, always awesome to have you among us. Of course, this is VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. There are different ways that VR has played a role over the last few years, VR 360 being one of them. For example, you can download a very popular app that features the Obama family, where you can get a tour of the White House and listen to some of the popular stories. The New Zealand government have done something very similar, where you can basically download the app and have a tour of their parliament. Turning to the other side of virtual reality with social media VR platform Old Space VR, which basically used the previous election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton to showcase various different political events. All Space VR, which is owned by Microsoft and has been around for many years, one of the most renowned social media VR platform apps in virtual reality today, is also hosting two live events about the Joe Biden and Donald Trump election. What Allspace VR has done since the last elections is upgrade how you can customize the avatars. The fact that the avatars are much more customizable now means that when you're having a conversation with someone specifically regarding two topics, including politics, means that it feels much more interactive, you feel much more close to the other person, more like you're having a real human face-to-face -face conversation. Whilst in Allspace, it was really fun because you could actually teleport from one world to another world, which were all designed differently and staging various different events. One of the worlds including being able to see the results live from the moon, where there were giant screens and a stage where you could meet other people, while other worlds were a bit more traditional, which felt like a live podcast or a live television studio where you had a host who would interact with the audience. It was really good fun to be able to talk and listen to what was going on and really, again, felt very human-like. Now, it has to be said that if we compare it to the previous elections since the last four years, VR hasn't really taken more of a dominant place within politics and especially election voting. There are some companies that sprung up, one called Splunk, which provide the technology to be able to vote online, who now have an app that's able to be downloaded where you can see results within VR. The other biggest contrast between using your computer to go into groups in social media or going through a 3D immersive software using virtual reality is the fact that you can reconstruct worlds in 3D to look pretty much whatever it is that you want it to look like. Now, during elections, especially on the day itself, where there's a lot of voters who are unsure as to who to vote for, if they were to go in certain groups and the world look a specific different way, this could actually sway people's opinion in a big way because some worlds, as you notice on Allspace, were very chaotic with fire and trash cans and pictures of Donald Trump here and there, whilst other worlds were very politically correct and didn't really spur anyone's opinion, although it would spur people's opinion from one side to another, if of course you were to listen and take part in the debates. All right, time to read some comments based on one of the previous videos, which is all about the launch of the Decker Gear. Now there's so many comments, I'm just gonna flick through them randomly, so that it's fair for everybody. So, uh, first comment, Superzom, you said, oh my god, I'm actually excited. Something better than the Quest, the native Steam VR has finger tracking like Valve. It's perfect. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, we're really looking forward to this headset. It looks really awesome. Can they make it in May? Who knows? Um, that's really the $1 million question. Uh, Keith Hillard said, I'm so cynical about new headsets at this point. I really want to be excited about this. Um, yeah, you're right. Although, no, let's not too be let's not be cynical too much because there are various different headsets coming out, including the HP Reverb G2, uh, which we'll be reviewing as we're one of the channel partners for HP, and also the Lynx is coming out now. That's going to be for enterprise uh, Lynx, which is an AR and VR headset, and also of course. Apple are in the works to launch a AR and VR headset too. And uh, there's going to be so many headsets in the next couple of years. So watch out for this space. Um, okay, so let's talk to Man Man Ads. Apparently you're French. Are you going to do subtitles? Thank you. Um, yes, je suis français. I'm French. Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? Which is why I say that in every video. Um, but I mean, if you guys can support the channel, uh, go to our merch store or you know, support us in one way, then maybe I can hire, um, you know, a translator to do the subtitles for me, because honestly, it's actually very time consuming to do subtitles. Um, so for the moment, I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm not planning to do subtitles, nor am I planning to do 
uh, a channel in French at this moment in time. But maybe in the future, who knows? So do stay tuned and do subscribe to the channel. Um, John Decisive says, thanks, VR Essentials. Very cool. Uh, you're very welcome. Happy that the video, you like the video. And thanks for watching the video. Um, then we're looking at Ken66. Ken the VR market is still up for grabs. I think if HP can, can copy index, this new startup can just clone Quest 2 hardware and slap a wider FOV to beat it. Forget all the face and finger tracking for now. Instead, focus on simple OS. Start the ball rolling. I couldn't agree more with you, Ken66. Ken66, sorry for mispronouncing your, your name. Keep the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling. That's exactly what it's all about. And uh, Elan Kim said, thank you. I just cancelled Quest 2 order. I'm going to wait for this headset. You know what? It's only $10, $10 deposit, and if it's going to come out within eight months and you can't really afford to get several different headsets, why not wait? It's going to be wireless, although that's a test to do, because as you know, we've been testing out the Pico Neo G2, and although the tracking is amazing on the headset itself, the moment that I patch it through to the computer using the, uh, the wireless settings, that's when there's a touch and go. Sometimes, you know, it's still not as good as virtual desktop. Guy got in, you've done an amazing job. So guys, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. By the way, if you have subscribed to the channel, make sure please to hit the bell notification so that you get notified every time that we upload a new video so you can keep track with news, updates, app reviews, interviews, hardware launches, and all this kind of stuff. If like us, you want the VR community to grow and you enjoy the content on this channel, then please go to the link description below the like button in order to support us. It will redirect you to our official VR Essentials merch store where all the designs, including the octopus playing Beat Saber and the shark in VR are limited editions and will only be available for the next two, three months or so. There really is something for everyone. So avoid disappointment, act right away. Thank you.